Part 3. The Actual Way to Listen to the Dharma Number 1. Eliminate the Three Faults What are the Three Faults? Using metaphors, they are the inverted vessel, polluted vessel and leaky vessel. The inverted vessel is placed upside down, so even if there is nectar descending from the heavens, it cannot enter the vessel because the mouth is facing it downward. The polluted vessel contains poison or excrement. If you pour nectar into such a vessel, what is the use? The nectar will mix with the poison and become poisonous. The leaky vessel has a hole at the bottom. Even if you pour nectar into the vessel and the nectar is not polluted, it cannot stay there. Instead, the nectar will quickly be lost. Actually, when we learn about these three vessels, we should reflect on ourselves and admit that we are such vessels and we haven't eliminated these faults. The first reason for being an inverted vessel is arrogance. They cannot absorb the Dharma or are unwilling to listen to the Dharma. Most people are like this. Look at how many lay people there are in Beijing. I estimate that there are at least a million, but how many of them would come to listen to the Dharma? They are all inverted vessels, thinking that it's enough to browse the internet or read a few books. This is being an inverted vessel, turning oneself upside down. However, they don't admit it. No one thinks they are an inverted vessel. The polluted vessel refers to those whose minds are filled with wrong views and various preconceptions. There are many such people. Many people come to ask me questions and I can immediately tell that they are polluted vessels because their minds are filled with numerous preconceptions. As for the leaky vessel, there is no need to elaborate. Such people don't absorb the teachings into their hearts at all. Actually, we should reflect and realize that we are these three types of vessels. If we haven't emptied ourselves, we become polluted vessels. We are most prone to becoming polluted vessels because we hold on to our own knowledge and views. This is due to ignorance, thinking that your knowledge is correct and therefore you become attached to it. Then, when you come to listen to the Dharma, you will check if it aligns with your own views. If it doesn't completely align, you will mix it with your own views, filtering the Dharma through your own understanding and then pass it on to others. As a result, it becomes poison. So, for those who seek to listen to the Dharma, including those with sharp faculties, when listening to the Dharma, you should completely empty yourself and receive the Buddha's and the teacher's teachings with a clear and open mind. Then, you should thoroughly comprehend them. Moreover, you need to practice and realize them. Only then will you be able to interpret the teachings in your own way. Only when you have fully received the lineage from your guru and thoroughly comprehended it will you be qualified to say that you can freely interpret the teachings. This doesn't mean that you have surpassed your teacher. Instead, it means that you can skillfully adapt. Since you have fully grasped the teachings, your interpretations won't deviate from what I have taught. 
Since you have thoroughly comprehended the teachings, you can make skillful use of them. This is because you have grasped the same thing as me, the essence of my teachings. When interpreting the teachings, the method and form may seem different, but they are essentially the same. This is what makes the best disciple. Therefore, a good disciple must have an empty vessel mentality, emptying oneself completely and cleansing away all preconceptions, cognitive obstacles, and gradually controlling afflictions, afflictive obstacles. By listening to the Dharma in this way, you can understand every message well. While listening to the Dharma, we need to deal with three faults. Number one, to deal with the fault of inverted vessels, we should listen attentively. Let go of all distractions. Focus your mind on listening to the Dharma and absorb every message. This is listening attentively. Some people, while listening to the teachings, are still reciting mantras with a string of prayer beads. Can this be considered listening to the Dharma? In fact, this is completely disrespecting the Dharma. You are not listening to the Dharma at all. Number two, to deal with the fault of polluted vessels, we should listen genuinely. This includes having the right intention and reception, that is, to truly learn the Dharma and benefit sentient beings, we listen to the Dharma and we understand the Dharma without errors or attachments. This requires us to adjust our motivation every time before listening to the Dharma, not seeking fame and fortune in this life or blessings in future lives, but solely listening to the Dharma with the intention of aspiring to attain Buddhahood for the benefit of sentient beings. To genuinely listen to the Dharma, we need to understand the Dharma correctly without any bias. How wonderful it is. It requires the right intention. It's important to fully comprehend your teacher's message without any misinterpretation or misunderstanding. Only when your motivation aligns with your teacher's motivation can you completely understand his teachings. When I give Dharma teachings, I may have generated Buddhacitta. If you don't have Buddhacitta, you may perceive what I impart as Hinayana teachings or the teachings of the human and heavenly way. If you have the intention of the human and heavenly way, you may interpret the teachings of the Buddhasattva path as the teachings of the human and heavenly way. This will certainly happen. Therefore, in order to resonate with me, first of all, you need to cultivate Buddhacitta. This is because when I give teachings, my mind is in that state. So, in order to fully understand my message, you need to generate the same intention. I impart the Mahayana teachings, but some people might perceive them as Hinayana teachings. Why? It's because they only have renunciation. If you listen to the Dharma with renunciation, you will only hear Hinayana teachings. To deal with the fault of leaky vessels, we should contemplate carefully. This means to contemplate the teachings carefully and bear them in mind. You should contemplate carefully. Some people, when listening to the Dharma, 
find the teachings delivered too quickly. In such cases, you should preview them in advance or listen slowly by yourself, just like Monk. He benefits quickly in this way, as this approach may suit him. He repeatedly listens to the teachings, takes notes, bears them in mind, and then studies with fellow practitioners. It's just like when we were in school. We would preview the material several times, understand it, and then listen to the teacher's lecture. In this way, we can fully comprehend the teachings and bear them in mind. This is just like what is taught in the Buddha's Atva stages. Number one, seek comprehensive knowledge in The Foundation for Yoga Practitioners, Volume 38. It is said that it's essential to listen to the Dharma with the aspiration to comprehend the teachings. This intention is very important, and I think it is the most important attitude. Seeking comprehensive knowledge means hoping to comprehend the teachings. Number two, listen attentively and absorb every message. This is just like a music enthusiast wholeheartedly listening to a beautiful melody. It requires full concentration. Number three, Abandon distractions and maintain reverence. This is just like personally listening to the Dharma in front of the Buddha or a filial child attentively listening to his mother's loving guidance without the slightest negligence. Reverence can deal with incorrect intentions, actions and attachments. Number four. Contemplate the teachings wholeheartedly. After listening, we should focus on the learned teachings wholeheartedly and contemplate them repeatedly. Back then, after listening to the Dharma, I would find a quiet place where there was nobody around and slowly contemplate the teachings while walking. This is because some teachings are profound. For simple teachings, we certainly don't need to contemplate in this way. At that time, I was learning the Chan school and there were many aspects that I didn't understand and needed to gradually contemplate on my own. The Buddhist scriptures say, with wholehearted devotion you can accomplish anything. If you contemplate the teachings you have heard wholeheartedly, they will become familiar and then become clear to you. If you learn the Dharma with this attitude, you will definitely be able to understand them. In the beginning, you don't need to practice concentration. As long as you listen to the teachings attentively, your concentration will naturally improve. When your minds are filled with many distractions, you'd better spend less time in formal sitting meditation. However, it's still necessary to sit for a while and calm the mind. In the beginning, we should focus on listening and contemplation, followed by upholding precepts. As time goes on, you can gradually practice more prostrations, which can also help you focus your mind. Practicing prostrations and making mandala offerings are also practices of concentration. All of these are practices of concentration. Don't think they are not. If you wholeheartedly focus on whatever you are doing, you are practicing concentration. Of course, these are not advanced practices of concentration. 
Once you have grasped these practices, you can then delve deeper into concentration. To delve deeper into concentration, we need to engage in dedicated sitting meditation. During this process, we need to enter into deep concentration and watch our subtle thoughts, karmic force and karmic habits. However, at our current stage, we may not have developed the ability to introspect. Our minds tend to run away and our eyes often look elsewhere. We haven't directed our attention inward. We need to cultivate the habit of introspection. 